So what are you guys? We're part of the Swartwood family! So are you guys real Swartwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! Hi guys, so this is completely a supplement. You really don't need this to do what you need to do in the book. But um, sometimes it helps to kind of have that background so things click a little bit better, especially if it's been a while since you've seen this. So if you remember what slope is, if you look at a guy like this, say like I have something like this, some line, and I look at how much I go over versus how much I go up, right? You can just intuitively tell, looking at this guy, that that ratio is kind of the same, right? Because that slant that you have remains the same for the entire line. So a way to think of this a little bit more formally is that the slope is a change in how much you go up, right? So literally this part, right? Versus how much, sorry, make it a little bit better, you go over. So, and everybody kind of learns this in school as rise over run. So rise is how much you go up, run is how much you go over. But that's actually from way back. I uh, might even go as far back as when they used to actually use this stuff to like, you know, raise your cannon and fire off cannonballs off a ship. Believe it or not, that's related to something called spherical geometry, which obviously they don't, they don't do anymore. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I, I get what slope is. So let's be a little bit more picky about this. You know, one way to compute the change in y is to say it's where you end up minus where you started. So y2 minus y1. And where you end up minus where you started, um, x2 minus x1 for the horizontal, right? Okay, so if I believe this, then, you know, traditionally the symbol for slope, if you remember, is m. So what we've really got so far is m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So no biggie. Super mellow. But you know what? Fractions scare me. So I'm going to multiply to get rid of that fraction. So d degree, if you multiply both sides by x2 minus x1, that would get rid of that fraction. So you have m x2 minus x1 is equal to y2 minus y1. Okay, what this equation gives you here is pictorially is something like this. You got some graph here, and you got some guy, and this guy's x1, y1. And you got some other guy here, and let's call this x2, y2. And that's it. So we've got some sort of relation between this guy and this guy. And effectively what we're doing is we're looking at how much you go over and how much you go up. Okay, that's totally fine. But you agree, if you have two points and you connect them, you're definitely gonna get a line, right? Okay. And do you also agree that any point along this line is going to have that same slant, that same slope? So maybe a way to get an equation for the entire line is to fix one guy. Let's say this guy. Make him a special guy. And you know if you pick any guy over here, let's say x comma y, generically any guy, then it's still true that if you take how much you go up, let's see if I, right, and you divide by how much you go over, that will give you the slant, and that slant remains the same. So all we have to do with this guy is take this guy and think, if I want a generic point on that line, right, then I just put in x minus x1. So take any point and subtract off our special guy, multiply the slope, and you should get the other point, the other generic point, right, taking away our special guy, special coordinate, okay? So I think that's it. So really the only difference is up top, you're talking about two specific points. On bottom, it's the same idea, but now you're just saying this guy doesn't have to be a specific x2, y2. So really the only difference is the top equation gives you a relationship in terms of two specific points, x1, y1, x2, y2. The bottom one's exactly the same, and it maintains that slope, right? Except now you're saying take any generic point, right, say x, y, and compare him to our fixed point, x1, y1, and you know that slope has got to remain the same. So this gives us a generic equation for a line. And you saw that in the book as the point-slope form. Okay, so this is really where we got our point slope form. Okay, so how do we get that? Basically all we do is play with this. So the key is to remember like who's allowed to vary and who's fixed. So in this case we picked our special point, x1, y1. Uh, that guy is fixed, he can't move. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply everybody by m. Sorry. Okay. And if you look at this, so m is a fixed guy, but x is a variable, so he can vary. So we're going to leave him like as is. m is a fixed guy, and x1 is a fixed guy. So this is effectively a constant. It's a number. It's like a fixed number. Whatever it is, it's not going to change. y, of course, is a variable, but y1 is not, right? Okay, so let's clean this up because that was getting a little messy. So if we take this guy... All we want to do is collect all the constants, so let's bring them to one side. So I think if we do this, add y1 to both sides, 
And don't forget this guy. We have this thing. The key to remember though is m is a fixed number, x1 is a constant, y1 is a constant, meaning these are all fixed numbers, they don't change. So when you add them together, you're just gonna get one number that won't ever change. Let's call that guy plus b. Okay, I'm gonna include that minus in here. So this whole thing, whatever it is, we'll call plus b. And then we have mx plus b is equal to y. And of course, maybe I should write it a little bit better. That is the slope-intercept form, okay? 